Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Let's start with the top story this evening. Prime Minister Modi visited Bhutan this week. The Prime Minister was accorded a red carpet welcome upon his arrival at the Paro airport. He has uh, also become the first foreign head of government to be conferred with the Bhutan's highest civilian honour. He has announced a 10,000 crore rupee assistance for the Bhutanese government for their five-year plan from 2024 to 2029. Moving on, the United Nations Security Council has rejected United States draft resolution on Gaza ceasefire. While there were 11 votes in favour of the resolution, it was vetoed by Russia and China. The US had submitted the resolution for a vote stating the necessity of an immediate ceasefire as part of a hostage deal. This after repeatedly using its veto power to block earlier ceasefire resolutions. Israel has seen increasing pressure from Washington and other allies over its war against Hamas militants and the devastation and killings in Gaza. The death toll has come closer to 32,000 people while damage on key infrastructure, residential buildings, particularly in Khan Yunus, has been significant. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Tel Aviv to meet Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu and his war cabinet. The discussion between the leaders will be around Israel's plan for a ground assault in Rafah, pushing more aid into Gaza, among other things. Now, we are joined by uh, Will Witzler, Senior Director of the Rafiq Harari Center and Middle East uh, Programs at the Atlantic Council. Uh, Mr. Witzler, thank you very much for joining us. You've also been the former Deputy Assistant Defense, Defense Secretary for the United States government. Uh, what I'd like to begin by asking you, does it really surprise you that the draft resolution for a ceasefire moved by the United States was vetoed down by Russia and China? It's not surprising, but it is disappointing. Um, what you've seen in New York is the performative part of diplomacy, while the substantive part of diplomacy is taking place right now in Doha, where the negotiations about the hostages are taking place. The other thing that you saw in New York was the after four uh, resolutions have failed at the UN Security Council, a fifth coming, is that the UN Security Council is divided now into very clearly into two camps. There's one camp which 11 states voted for, which is the pro-diplomacy camp, which is trying to support the work that's being done to, uh, to achieve a ceasefire and get out the hostages. And the other side with three countries, Russia, China, and Algeria, is really the pro-Hamas uh, victory camp. Um, and they're trying to uh, get around the negotiations that are happening right now to hand Hamas a victory that it can't achieve either on the battlefield or in the real negotiations that are taking place. Right. Uh, Will, what do you think currently with Secretary Blinken in Israel, does U.S. have enough uh, firepower to rein in the Israeli government right now through argu arguments, through logic, through diplomatic pressure? It's, it's now been over a month since President uh, Biden uh, put a clear marker on the road is that he would not support an Israeli attack into Rafah, which is at the southernmost point inside Gaza, without a clear Israeli plan to protect the million uh, plus civilians that have been located there from the north and the central parts of Gaza. Since that period of time, despite all the, the noise and the bluster that you hear from Jerusalem, the reality is, is that Israel has not gone in to Rafah. And, um, uh, and now Israel is sending uh, some of their most senior officials to the United States to have concrete discussions about how to protect those civilians. So does the United States have leverage? Yes, it has leverage. And in fact, you're seeing the results of it right now. Right. So you are seeing uh, a slowing down of the offensive by uh, Israel. They've not taken those steps in terms of getting into Rafah. But for a ceasefire on the ground, uh, do you think we are close to it? Secretary Blinken has said that we are close to it, but there are still some gaps. We've been close to it from a variety of reports for now over a month and a half. Um, there, uh, Every time... The, um, the group of countries that are involved in this diplomacy, that's the United States, that's Qatar, that's Egypt, that's Israel, uh, puts together a deal that they believe should meet Hamas's legitimate um, uh, concerns. 
um, Hamas has rejected it. And um, one hopes that Hamas changes its views now, um, no longer uh, allows its people um, uh, to be um, the brunt of the war, and achieves this deal that would have a temporary ceasefire in return for the, re the, the return of the hostages that were illegally taken. Um, but it remains to be seen about whether or not Hamas will take this deal. Right. Now, within the United States, in the political circle, uh, is there enough support for the Biden administration's support to Israel in this offensive against the Hamas? I think when it comes to the question of Israel's need to achieve its legitimate uh, military objectives and ensure security for Israel, I think that there's general support in the United States and in the political, across the political spectrum. Where you, what you've seen um, a decline is um, is uh, the support for Israel um, to do things that are against what the Biden administration's policy is. For instance, to go into Rafa, and you've seen a growing consensus, especially on the left side of the Democratic Party, but not only there, that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not managing this in a way that is um, uh, beneficial for Israel and the Israeli people. And that statement came very clear from Senator Sh Chuck Schumer, the highest ranking uh, Democrat in the Senate, the highest ranking Jew um, in American politics, and someone who has supported Israel throughout his entire career. So his statements are very important, very significant. Right. My, my final question to you, Will, uh, would be about Hamas's ability to continue retaliating and the possibility of this becoming a larger conflict. Do you think that threat is behind us? And who could be the actors supporting Hamas right now from behind the scenes uh, whose interest is that the situation does not improve? One of the few ways that Hamas is able to actually achieve its objectives is for the war to be expanded into a wider regional war. That's what they've been seeking uh, from October 7th on. They haven't achieved that objective yet. But there is a real danger of that occurring, especially during Ramadan, not occurring necessarily because one of the actors makes a conscious, intentional decision to escalate the war, but because events spiral out of control. We've seen that before. That's how the war back in 2006 between Israel and Hezbollah started, not with an intent, but with an accident and with things spiraling out of control. There's lots of actors right now, including the United States, working around the clock to prevent that scenario. But the risk of that scenario is, is, quite, is quite significant. And uh, one more question, if I may add. Do you think uh, Israel is losing uh, leverage diplomatically, globally, because of the kind of offensive that Netanyahu has launched against uh, Hamas? The number of civilians who've been killed, the children, the women, the horror stories that we hear from Gaza? There's, there's, there's no question. The, um, the pictures that come out of Gaza every day um, uh, uh, damage Israel's credibility and in turn damage the United States' credibility as well. The, um, these uh, military experts like myself can talk about uh, the necessity and the proportionality of these but the simple pictures of suffering, of innocence, of women, of children, um, uh, damage um, Israel's, uh, 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 the perspectives around Israel every day that this war goes on. On October 8th, right after, I wrote about the fact that Israel had a window of legitimacy for this war. The danger is that that window of legitimacy is closing in the eyes of many people around the world. All right. Uh, Israel is losing credibility and the legitimacy of continuing this war is also going down. Thank you very much, uh, Will Wetzler, for joining us on the program, giving us your perspective on the deteriorating situation and U.S.'s efforts to bring about a ceasefire. We're slipping into a short break, but don't go anywhere. Fresh tensions between Pakistan and Afghanistan after Pakistani forces carried out airstrikes on Afghan territory. A discussion with Anju Gupta, security analyst and former DGP, when we're back.